everyone and welcome back to the Colour Cave where we like to play with art stuff. My name is Gem. Just before we jump into our colouring video, I have popped a few used items into the stash shop today, including this graphite sketch set which came in one of our scroller boxes. Uh, the razor is still wrapped. The exciting thing about this is the graphite stick for sure. Along with a few other bits and pieces including um, a wee paper bundle as well. So if you're looking for some very cheap second-hand art supplies or some very well-priced new art supplies, you can go to the website and check that out. So yes, today you can see the corner of my pencil case peeking out here. I had kept this little book out here. I'd actually forgotten about this and I feel really bad because this was gifted to me by one of our subscribers, uh, Marigold, thank you very much once again. I have never had a Rita Berman colouring book and I've always wanted one. And it was just one of those ones I never got round to, you know, to, to getting for myself. And this dropped through the, the mail and I tucked it away. And it was when I was moving that I found it and I remembered about it. So um, I am I'm really happy to have this. I know Rita Berman's turned out quite a few books now and I really like her art style. But I, I was kind of doodling away in this um, on the run up to packing up the house. And I'd started this little page here and you can see my little guitars looking a wee bit lonely there. So I thought we could maybe do another element of this today and I'm gonna work on this. I was gonna say lamp post, it's clearly a clock post, uh, but the same idea. And uh, I'm gonna use a sort of gold color because I thought that might tie in well with what I'd done with the guitar previously. So I'm using polychromos colored pencils. Um, again, that was the set that I left out right to the end. Um, for our regular viewers, you will know that as my go-to pencil. Towards the end of this video, I would like your input because we are going to have to choose our colouring projects. Now, this is the start of August and what I would like to do is pick a couple of projects that will take us up to the release of Johanna Basford's new book, which is arriving around the beginning of November. I am really excited about it. But in the meantime, let's talk about this. So for a gold colouring, I usually go for the Naples yellow and the kind of ochre colours uh, so I've got green gold dark naples ochre and light yellow ochre that would be my three sort of main base colour pencils I'll just put the names of those there for you just now if you want to pick them out for yourself and also I go for like a like a brownier colour so uh, you can see it's well used as well um brown ochre or raw umber those are two like go-to colours for me as well when it comes to gold and finally, for some shadowy areas, I use the dark sepia. It's a little bit more organic than black. Black tends to stand out a little bit more, but you can still get some nice dark shadow areas. If you're not a huge fan of the sepia, or you maybe want cooler tones, you can use one of the cold greys instead. Uh, cold grey five or six works quite well as well, um, and you know, to replace the black, so to speak. So let's do that. Let's get zoomed in a little bit now. Okay, so as with most things, I like to start with my light colour and uh, really <laughs> I'm really sorry in classic cave style there are fields that are actually paddocks they're not fields there's two paddocks directly behind the new cave and you know like right outside the cave window and Mr Gem has put two bulls in today one in each paddock paddock and they've been standing mooing at each other for about four hours now. I'm really sorry if you can hear that. I've shut the window and everything but it's so loud. And I've got proper double glazing in this house as well. It's not even as if it's the old sash windows with one pane of glass. I've actually got double glazing. It's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> so noisy. Anyway, yeah, so uh, when I'm working on metallic objects, uh, obviously to make them look metallic, we want a lot of shine. And the thing that makes something look really shiny is how crisp the highlights are. The crisper the highlights, the shinier something looks. If you think about something that's chrome, it picks up reflections really easily and the reflections are quite clear um, because it's super shiny. When we start with the lightest colour, there, yeah, there's a very good use for it here. So I'm starting off here with the dark Naples ochre. 
And I'm, I'm starting in this middle section just because it's got a larger surface area so I can kind of figure out what I'm doing. The other thing I wanted to say as well is I've never, because I've never coloured in Rita's books, I've never coloured on this paper before. And the polychromos pencils are a safe bet for me because they behave well with most things. Um, and it's the pencils I know best out of all the pencils that I own. And I'm sure you all do that as well. If you're in a new colouring book, you like to use your go-to pencils because it's like a comfy pair of slippers. For those of you who do colour in Rita's books, I would be really interested to know uh, what pencils you tend to, to favour. Do you favour a set because of the paper or do you like just use your, your favourite pencils? Yes, yeah, so I'm going to give all this here a light coat. Also as well, I mean I knew Rita Berman had a few books out. I didn't realise quite how many. So I'm thinking to myself, um, if I, you know, if I enjoy myself in here I might have to invest in some more of her books. So for those of you that do enjoy Rita's pages, which book of hers is your favourite? I would love to hear that down in the comments if you have a particular one that tickles you best because this is this is kind of new territory for me which is nice and I don't I don't get as much time nearly as much time as I used to to color but I always enjoy it when I do and I I'm I'm glad that I do do these coloring videos because it lets me it lets me do a bit of coloring that I otherwise probably wouldn't do to be honest so yeah. Yeah, so I, I kind of went off on a tangent there with the, the bulls just <laughs> distracting me. We need to, yeah, we need to get our colouring projects together for the next little while. Number one, so that you guys can gather anything you want to gather up if you want to colour along or just participate and decide on what you would like. I'm deliberately easing off here because this is kind of like poofy. You know, there's poofy clouds there, so I want to make that kind of misty looking. So I'm just going to put the lightest bit of uh, base colour there. I'll make this a bit more substantial down the very bottom here. Well down here. As we did last time I'm going to put the colouring books to a vote so that will be on a community post on the community tab after this video goes up. We'll do exactly what we did last time. The one with the most votes, the most popular one is the one we'll start with and if we get it finished before Johanna's book come out we will start on the next most popular one. So we're going to do it that way. Some of them are shorter projects than others as well so we'll, uh, depending on how the voting goes we might get more than one done before uh, before November rolls around. So I'm trying to think about, um, I don't even know, there's probably a light source coming from our viewpoint um, because this is an archway in the train station and this out here is the sky with stars in it and I've noticed that Rita quite often if she's got a scene she likes to um, indicate what time of day it is because there's another one here this is obviously supposed to be a journey um you know so this is them picking their destinations here her and her wee pussycat and she's got the sun in the sky out the window and then when you turn the page this is night time this view they've picked moscow this is night time um and she's traveling they might as well be in the room with me <laughs> i'm really sorry guys so she's travelling through the night here, but if we go a page or two further on, we can see here that um that the sun's the sun's back out. So I imagine the light source, maybe where we are looking from is inside the train station. The light source is coming from where we're standing from. That's it, that's kind of the way I'm gonna take it. So when we're thinking about the reflections, the reflections are gonna be at the, the highlighted areas are gonna be on this side. So with my uh, light yellow ochre, I am going to start on these outside edges here. I'm going to sharpen this pencil up so I've got a really, really sharp point on it. And I'm going to leave that a bit lighter in the middle. And I've just faded that out down here in this, in this area where it goes. <laughs> and I'm going to take my green gold and use that on these very outside edges and maybe a little bit under here as well. And then just go back to my latest colour. Maybe pop a little bit of more of that in this area here. And then I can just repeat this process down the bottom. Slightly larger area so I can uh, take my time a bit more here. And then maybe a little bit of... I feel like a little bit of brown ochre there on that outside edge as well. Now it's a bit easier to demonstrate here as well when I was talking about the direction of the light source so where the highlight's going to be. When we've got a straight across piece like this, obviously this is curved. So you want the lightest part to tie up with this lightest part here, so that's going to be in the middle. And then you can bring your next darkest colour, but just don't bring it in as far as the last one. 
and then you know gradually step it back so my my green gold's only going to be just at the very edges here and then the, the tiniest little hint of the brown ochre and that gives us this nice idea that there's a, a sort of shiny part in the middle this part's receded so i wouldn't have as much of a highlight there you know so that we can show that it's tucked under a little bit more so it is going to be darker but what we can then do is make the outside edges darker still especially because they've got you know we've got some texture here as well so when i'm using my ochre pencil i can bring that quite far in but the latest part is still the center part like so i'd even be tempted to put a little bit more on there yeah there we go Again, I'm going to leave these middle ones quite pale here. We're nearly done here in the cave now. Um, I just have a light fitting to put up and that is everything that we will be doing will be done, which is really nice. So um, this week I feel as if I'm just starting to settle in properly to my, uh, you know, to what I would call like a normal cave routine. So I think this is really where the, uh, me actually using the room the way it's set up starting to kick in so i'm going to do this for maybe two or three weeks and then um see if i need to tweak anything move stuff about and then after that i'm going to do a proper cave tour video and show you the setup you know as it's working for me and that it is working for me that's the plan so that's probably going to be three three weeks away or so and i'll do a proper cave tour video i'm just gonna move this up now so that's quite exciting but it's it's nice because um the the one thing that mr gem and i wanted to do was because the whole house needs redecorated and there's some building work needing done as well or some improvements needing done so one of the things that mr gem and i wanted to do was we wanted to get the our bedroom to you know fin a finished stage fairly quick um, just so we had somewhere to retreat to in the chaos because right now I don't have a lounge at all um, there is nothing in the lounge because we're knocking walls down and one thing and another just with the layout of the house the um, the cave is directly opposite our bedroom so we actually have one end of the house that's nearly finished and it's like safe <laughs> Which is really nice. I mean, I, I'm a huge fan of that, obviously. Uh, so I can literally roll out of bed and come to work. <laughs> like, literally could do that if I really wanted to. I don't want to do that. So that's kind of cool. But it's nice to have the, the nearly finished end of the house almost done. I've not got much left to do in my bedroom. Um, and it's very cosy. It's very nice indeed. It's very calm. And unsurprisingly, you will be shocked to learn it's green. <laughs> We actually, um, Mr. Gem likes green as well. I think it must just be our, um, you know, the, the, the sort of farmery parts. <laughs> uh, but we did have the conversation again about how we're probably going to end up just the whole house being green and we're trying to avoid it if we can help it. Uh, because we were going to paint our living room sage green. Um, but we've decided we might try and pick another colour. So blue seems to be on the agenda, which is nice. But um, the green in our bedroom is actually the green that was in our old lounge. <laughs> we liked it so much we brought it with us uh so but that's absolutely zero regrets but I've, I've paired it with like a mustardy color that's still like you know quite in fashion so and um, we've got a little pop of color as well that's how the house stuff's going but yeah we've got we've got mega work mega work to be done so we just need to try and um sort of grin and bear it for a little while <sighs> probably about i think about 18 months start to finish truthfully because um, we are adding bits onto this house. The the instant chaos is palpable at the moment. Um, but see, I think it'll be worth it in the end. Up, I always felt in the old house, um, it was always cold. It was very, it's the dustiest house I've ever lived in. And I'm really enjoying not having all that dust. Um, and it's much, much easier for me to keep this house clean which is lovely because I like everything in order and I wouldn't say that I'm a clean freak or a neat freak or anything like that. I'm definitely not, but um, I do like a, a certain standard of orderliness and it's much easier to maintain. So there are things I'm enjoying about this and I think once it's finished, it's going to be just right for us because I always felt a bit, not lonely in the old house, but I just kind of felt as if I was rattling about in it myself quite a lot of the time. Um, it was a big house to be rumbling about in on my own for most of the day, so um, it's nice being in a slightly smaller house for that. Uh, we've still got a really good sized garden as well, which is great, but I've got to look after this one myself. We had a gardener at the old house. We could still get a gardener if we want, but it's 
it's small enough that Mr. Jem and I can manage it. And Mr. Jem has more time now. Because it's a smaller farm he's looking after, he's actually got more time to himself. So he's been enjoying piddling about in the garden as well. So that's kind of cool too. So it's just, it's a lot of changes. A lot of changes. There's lots of really ornate bits in this. Like I feel I want this to be, like I feel as if this is coming out like that. So it should be darkened at the base. Yeah, just trying. And then on those outside edges, just use a little bit of sepia. Again, just thinking, trying to keep that kind of light source consistent, like here. This is just the same method for all these parts now. I'm not really doing anything different. I'll just use the ochre here. Yeah, so I'm trying to think again. I'm trying to think logically here, but that's not always the case. This has got a kind of split in it here, so let's take advantage of that. And use some of our colours that we've already used. Our bully friend seems to have settled down a wee bit, which is nice. Bit of peace for a wee while. <laughs> yeah, so Papa Jem was here last weekend and he was helping me set up the the camera rig and whatnot. I'm fine at like bolting things to walls and whatnot. I'm not the best with electronics though. And uh, I would rather get someone that knows what they're doing. Um, we do have an electrician coming, but he's not coming probably until next week and I didn't want to wait any longer, uh, you know, before getting going again with proper videos. Um, and Papa Jem was desperate to come up anyway because he wanted to come and see the combine harvester because we are, well, we're, we're supposed to be starting harvest, but um, yeah, it's really wet. But anyway, so uh, he was kind of, um, he was kind of coming anyway, so he said he would bring all of his tools and everything and he would help me to get set up. These sections that, and the choices that I'm making, I'm basically just down to aesthetics now because I wanted this to be darker because it's a bend, but I also wanted it to be lighter because it's in the middle um, and that would keep in line with all the rest of our highlighted areas. Um, but I think it's best if we make that darker just so we've got a bit of contrast between the different sections. Yeah, so Papa Gem is, uh, he's been here the weekend just passed and Mama Gem is coming this weekend. Um, she couldn't come last weekend, she had a lot of appointments and things to go to and she just had kind of a lot of stuff to organise so she, they decided to come separately this time. <laughs> So that's going to be quite nice. So one of the things that Mama Gem and I are doing this weekend is we're going to see if we can pick paint colours for our uh, lounge but also for the spare bedroom which will be the room that Mama Gem sleeps in when she's here. I think I've mentioned this before and it's not a big deal. My parents talk about it all the time. Uh, my parents haven't slept in the same bed for many, many years. Neither of them are particularly heavy sleepers and they were actually keeping each other awake and they went through this for years. Um, and their, their relationship and their sleeping is so much better now that they sleep in separate rooms. And uh, they've been they've been married for 40 odd years, you know, it's not like they don't like each other or anything, they actually secretly do like each other. But what that does ha cause problems with is when they stay with someone, um, it can be, you know, difficult uh, somebody ends up sleeping on an air mattress or you know and I, d I really don't want that for my parents now because they're getting a bit older but thankfully we, we have a an, another spare room but it's tiny it's like a box room but we are planning on putting just a, a like a single sofa bed kind of thing in there so Papa Jem will sleep in there and um, you couldn't swing I was about to say you couldn't swing a cat you couldn't swing your like your little finger in there just now um, because everything from the living room has been displaced into that room like you literally can there's you can just get the door open no more it's awful it's like my worst nightmare because of that situation though my parents are the people that come and stay and visit us the most it has led to the spare room being called my mum's room because <laughs> mr jem will say to me oh your mum's room and i'm like no it's the spare room but it's quite funny because in the old house mum did have a room to her, herself but she was up all the time at the old house it's quite funny that's been interesting um so yeah pa papa jem's gonna have to wait for his room but but uh, Mama Gem and I are going to pick pink colours for her room uh, this weekend. <laughs> so uh, it's going to have to change. At the moment, it's purple. And when I say purple, if anybody remembers the back of the door in Monica's apartment and Friends, if you remember that colour, uh, the spare room is all that colour. And when I say all, I mean all of it, the carpet as well. It's a bit much. So we're uh, looking for something maybe a little bit calmer and possibly a little bit sort of more timeless shall we say for our for our new and improved um mum's room 
Okay, so I'm going to try and have a highlight here. So I'm going to darken this part down. It's really funny as well. I've talked about this before because uh, Mr. Jem's parents, they talk about having a cupboard under the stairs. They live in a bungalow. <laughs> they have a cupboard under the stairs. The point is, if it was a house that did have stairs, that's what, the, you know, that would be the cupboard kind of thing. And we've started to call, we have a, a little toilet. So I think I think you guys in the States call it a powder room. It's just like a, a toilet and a, and a wash hand basin, you know, like a sink. That is next door to the kitchen at the moment, but eventually that will be built into the utility room. Uh, but Mr. Jem started calling it the downstairs toilet. <laughs> We live in a bungalow now also, so um, yeah, uh, I think it's just something he's picked up from his parents, but we, we do call it the downstairs toilet now, which I think is really funny. We've kind of like carried on the tradition from his parents, but it's good because we talk about that and the, the other bathroom we just call the, we just call the main bathroom, so it's the downstairs toilet and the main bathroom, even though we don't have any stairs, it's quite funny. It just tickled me a little bit. Right, I'm going to take the green gold because this, um, the outside of this clock is actually split into two facets and I want to make that quite obvious. So I'm going to take the green gold and I'm going to run that round this outside part just where, where there's, uh, Rita has put some of these little texture marks into these little hatched lines there. I'll pop some of that in there. And then on this inside ring, I'm going to use the light yellow ochre. And I'm going to go the opposite parts. So where I've put the green gold in on the outside layer, I'm going to leave that lighter. And then I'm going to use this in the areas where I haven't. And see, it gives you that nice sort of tonality there. It gives you that little bit of little bit of contrast. It's not technically correct, but do you know what? It doesn't need to be. It doesn't need to be. Okay, and for these um, hands here as well, I'm going to use this same colour. And then I'm going to use this sepia, the dark sepia here, just to put a little darker tint on there and then I can go back over that. Now as for the clock face itself I think we better just leave it white um, by the time we've coloured everything else in that'll stand out really nicely. I know that's a bit boring just now but um, yeah <laughs> I think it looks pretty good like that. Righty ho so let's take a little zoom out now. I'll move it a wee bit too far and uh, there you have it so really simple ways of making something look shiny or golden. Um, I think we've done this justice, particularly this bit here, because there's a lot going on up here. Um, and we've managed to keep this fairly subtle so that we can do something with these clouds. So um, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this today. See, so this is really nice for me because I've never coloured in any of Rita Berman's books. And I'd like to say thank you again to Marigold for, uh, for gifting this to me. It was super, super kind and she is a super kind person. So if we could, uh, if we could have some uh, a round of cow udders in the comments for Marigold, that would be lovely. Show your appreciation because it's things like that that do keep the cave going sometimes um, when we're destitute, which is now obviously. Uh, we will discuss that more later. Um, yeah, so now I want to talk about our projects going on. Obviously, the first option for colouring projects is for us to continue on with this page. So if that is your first choice, you can either let me know in the comments or you can vote on the poll, which is over on the community tab, and it should be up by now. If it's not up right now, um, when this video first comes out, check back in a couple of hours, uh, depending on time zones, and you should be able to vote there. So that's your first option is Rita Berman. Your second choice is by Hannah Carlson, and this book was gifted to me as well by the lovely Julia K of Julia K Art Studios. She kind of forgot that you can get these books in English, um, so this is the Swedish version that she she brought me this as a present when she came to stay with me, and this is Tales Beyond the Stars, I think it translates as. I'm learning a wee bit of Swedish, but it's not that good yet. So uh, I thought we could maybe pick something a little bit more complicated, and I thought we could maybe try and tackle this double page of unicorns because this could be a whole load of fun. So that is your second choice, that is Hannah Carlson. Our third choice is an intricate ink animals in detail. Um, I have four out of the five volumes. Um, volume four is missing, it's out of print. Um, but I would take a further vote if you want to do uh, a Tim Jeff's animal, I'd be quite happy to do that. So that is your third option. And finally, there's a book we haven't seen in a long time. This is Pro Drudgy Edge Strony Snoo, which translates roughly as um, The Other Side of Dreams 
or The Other Side of Sleep, something like that. And uh, this is by Carolina Kubikowska. You don't see her books very often anymore. And I really fancy colouring at this. I would do these two pages together um, just because the nature of her artwork, uh, these pictures are quite quick to colour. Um, so I'd like to do this little uh, princess with the tree crown and also uh, stick to the unicorn theme. The unicorn is crying what looks like blood. Nothing sinister there at all, honestly. Um, so that is your last choice for our colouring project. So as I say, please take a vote. Let me know what you would like. And we will start with the most popular project. And if we get that finished before Johanna's new book comes out, we'll move on to the next one. So get down into the comments. You can leave it there. Or you can go across the community tab, as I said, and there will be a poll to vote on there. And that is it for today, guys. I want to thank you very much for coming and joining me. This is the first kind of relaxed video I've done. I'm still not using to face in a wall but I am getting there with it and uh, things are, are getting to what is going to be the new normal quite quickly now. Thanks very much for watching, thanks for coming and hanging out, I really appreciate it and I will see you back in the cave on Thursday for another video so have a great day everyone and bye bye for now.